Yeah, that's right. This really is where we're starting this month. Count them. Five variables. We got A, B, M, N, and an X in there. Terrifying, isn't it? Well, I have a great strategy for dealing with problems just like this. It's very simple. No fear. All right, they're just trying to scare you with all these letters here, but we know how to handle this. Don't get afraid. These problems are usually a lot easier than they look. So we're going to jump right in here. We know how to handle the left-hand side here. We're going to use the distributive property. So we're going to break this up and multiply each term here by this quadratic over there. So we'll go ahead and write that out and see what that gives us. We'll have x squared times this whole quadratic. Then we'll take the 3x times that whole quadratic. This gives us a good idea what's going on. And at the end, we're going to take the 6 times that whole quadratic. Now we could keep on going. Keep on going, multiply out each one of these, get a whole mess of terms. Let's, let's stop and take a look. This, this makes us more comfortable. This is something we can handle. Let's look at what's going on over here. Instead of looking at what's over here, let's look at what's not over there. There's no x cubed term. There's no x term. So let's focus on what's not there. If there's no x cubed term there, that means we can't have an x cubed term here when we multiply this out. So where do we get those x cubed terms? We're going to get one right here, and we're going to get one right here when we multiply this out. So let's see what we get there. We multiply these two terms, we're going to have an ax cubed. And multiply these two terms, we're going to get a 3x cubed. And there aren't any more x cubed terms that will come out when we multiply all this out. Now these two have to cancel because we have no x cubed term over here. So that tells us that a has to be negative 3. And just like that, we figured out what one of these letters is. All right, well, we got somewhere by looking at x cubed. Let's look at the other thing that's not there, the x. Now where are we going to get an x over here? Let's see, well, we're not going to get an x at all right here. Over here, we're going to get an x multiplying these two terms. That's going to give us 3bx. And we're going to get an x multiplying these two terms right here. That's going to give us a 6ax. Well, we already know that a is negative 3. 6 times negative 3 gives us a minus 18x. All right, now we need this term to go away, just like we needed this term to go away. So that tells us that b is 6. That'll knock out the x term. So I figured out a and b. Let's focus on m and n. We see where the n is. That one's pretty simple. The only place I'm going to get a constant when I multiply all this out, everything's going to have an x in it. Everything here is going to have an x squared at least in it. Everything here, you got that x sitting there. The only place we're getting a constant is right there, is that 6 times b. So we know that 6 times b is n. So that tells me that n, 6 times 6, n is 36. And now we're on to m. Well, m is the coefficient here, the x squared term. So now I have to figure out where x squareds come out of this. Let's see where we're going. We're going to get one right here. We're going to get one right here. We multiply the 3x times the ax term. And we're going to get one right here. So all the x squared terms are going to come from. So we got b times x squared. We know that b is 6. So that gives us a 6x squared. And then right here we have 3x times ax, that gives us a 3 times a, x squared. So a is negative 3, 3 times a, negative 9. And then finally we have over here we have another 6x squared. So add these up, we get 6 plus 6 is 12, minus 9 is 3x squared, which tells us that m is 3. So just like that, no fear, we pounded our way through the answer. We've got M and N. Now let's see, when we read the problem at the end, always important to read the problem. What is the product of M and N? We multiply these two together, we get M times N is 108. And we're on to the next problem. Oh boy, well, at least this time we only have one variable. The problem is it's up here in the exponent. Now that's a little freaky. We're used to like linear equations, quadratic equations. So the first thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to try to pull that variable out of the exponent. We're looking for 3 to the x. So I'm going to sit here. I'm going to say, okay, y equals 3 to the x. I'm going to 
I can deal with y. It's a lot easier than dealing with that variable up in the exponent. So now I need to rewrite this. And the first term, that's pretty simple. The first term, that's just y. Now this one here, 3 to the x plus 2, well, we remember our exponent laws. That's just 3 to the x times 3 squared. Well, 3 squared is 9, and 3 to the x, we said that's y. So that tells me that this term is just 9 times y. Now we got to go over here. We have 9 to the x, but if y is 3 to the x. Now I have a problem with a bunch of these exponential forms. I try to get everything in the same base, get everything on the, on the same level here. I want to use 3s instead of 9s. It's convenient because 9 is 3 squared. So I can write this as 3 squared raised to the x. And again, we break out our exponent laws. This is just 3 to the 2x. And I can run that same law the other way and go 3 to the x squared, and there's y again. So when I drop in my y, this is just y squared. All right, it's working really well so far. Let's try this last term. It's kind of a combination of what we did here and here. First, well, we're going to go ahead and break this out as 9 squared times 9 to the x. And that 9 squared is 81. And that 9 to the x, we already dealt with 9 to the x. We figured out that 9 to the x is y squared. So this is just plus 81 times y squared. And this is an equation we know how to handle. We combine these two, we get 10y. Combine these two, we get 82y squared. And now we know that y can't ever be 0. There's nothing we can stick up there that's going to make 3 to the x become 0. So y isn't 0, so we can divide by y. We can also divide by 2, and we'll get 5 equals 41y. Divide by 41, and we get y equals 5 over 41. And once again, we go back. We read what we're looking for. We want the value of 3 to the x. We found y. But y is 3 to the x. So no fear. We are done.